All right, well, welcome back, and I'm joined by my friend and colleague, uh, Josh Short here. Uh, I'm it's his, it's his turn to take a shot at me <laughs> as, I, as I head toward the exit. Not a shot, but shots. Um, I, I will say this, look, and you know this, you're a dear friend of mine. Uh, when I announced, and I put this on Facebook earlier today, but if you don't have Facebook, no problem, because I wanted to tell the viewers, when I first came back, so many people were excited, but then so many people had questions, particularly, you remember this, we were supposed to do the 11 o'clock together. Right. And so because of some things that changed in the station personnel, and things like that, that never happened. And so now I get my five and a half, six minutes of fame with you. <laughs> and I'm really excited about it. And I'm looking forward to it, because everybody knows this guy puts together great stories. Well, I'm hoping you have a great life, and it is hard to put that in six minutes. I'm sorry to my producers and my news director in advance, but look, we, we stood not far from here, which you'll see momentarily, and we were able to stand in one spot, and in that one spot, we were able to see every part of your life, and that was what was so impactful. So what you're about to see is what we call the McFadden Mile, but also a literal walk down memory lane. have covered the best of the best, the who's who of Michiana. But really, you lived around who's who in this home here. Yes. Who did you live around? Tell me some of the names. Well, the person who lived behind us across the alley was a guy named Joe Kernan, who was South Bend City Controller, South Bend Mayor. Oh, and by the way, became Lieutenant Governor and then Governor of the state of Indiana. Uh, and after he became governor of the state of Indiana, on weekends we would see state troopers parked in his driveway. So we knew he was home. And then right across the street, Digger Phelps, who moved in uh, when he started coaching at Notre Dame back in 1970 or 71, snapped that 88 game winning streak against UCLA, went to the Final Four one time. Notre Dame, number one in football, now laying claim, number one in basketball. So we were sandwiched between Two Notre, Dame, uh, two Notre Dame legends. I live a block from where I grew up. And the first home that my wife and I owned was on East Angela in the 400 block. That was the first home we, we bought. And our bedroom overlooked the campus. And at night, you could see without obstruction the Golden Dome. And when, when my wife Lori was pregnant for all the boys, every night she prayed to Mary on top of the dome for a safe pregnancy. How can you not love this community, you know? <laughs> yeah. Don't mean to get emotional, my friend. Yeah, I get it. I get it. This is this is your community. Yeah. And when you get choked up about it, it says a lot about this place that you call home. Yeah. What comes back to your mind with the Golden Dome behind us here? Uh, well, it's just, it's always been familiar to me because even before I was a student here, I grew up in Harder Heights, which is just south of campus. And my friends and I would get on our bikes and ride out here and raise hell and <laughs> have a little fun. Yeah. How are you able to navigate telling stories about, for example, Notre Dame, necessarily some stories that may weren't necessarily good in the news, but you had to tell it and maintain your integrity journalistically as well. How are you able to do that? Well, I, I think early on, I learned from other people that you have to tell the story, whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And there were times when I told a lot of stories, well, I don't want to say a lot of stories, but I relayed stories about Notre Dame that Notre Dame, I'm sure, wasn't happy about. And if anything, I always got the impression uh, from the people I spoke to who were the head of public relations or sports information department was, at the end of the day, Terry, we know you're fair. We know you're not doing this to get anybody. You're not a gonzo journalist. You're telling the story. And sometimes that story isn't what we want to hear, but we respect you for always trying to find the truth. Did you ever grapple with the truth when it came to stories about friends or family members that you had to tell? Sure, sure, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I, I don't want to get into specifics, but you know, I, I remember going on the air having to relay a story about somebody I was very close to, and it was tough. Almost as tough, or if not as tough as uh, you know, the day I had to talk about my friend Jackie Walorski getting killed in a car crash. That was a tough day. I that was a tough day. I've been doing this for 40 years, and this is among the hardest days, most shocking days, uh, being in this news business. Yeah. Um, when you lose somebody you know, somebody you covered, and somebody you respect. Yeah. You've covered 
presidents, vice presidents, members of presidential cabinets. I have to mention former President Trump. Even though he didn't come here to Notre Dame, he came to Michiana. He was in Elkhart. Take me back to the day. Well, it was, it was 2018, and uh, Mike Braun was running for Senate the first time, and President Trump was there to, uh, <clears throat> to obviously rally the troops, you know, build up a case for Mike Braun. And I can still remember Trump talking about, you know, the fake news media back there pointing to the press pool at the back of the auditorium, and everybody's a boo, 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 and they're getting on us. Everybody back there, the fake news media, look at all of them. Then after he leaves, and the crowd starts to exit, the arena, everybody's coming up saying, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. We love your news. You guys do a great job. Which just kind of shows me that, yeah, people get caught up in the moment, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're, most people are good, decent people, and they, they know the truth. They see the truth. So we got WNDU behind us, but we're on hallowed ground, too. Yeah. Right this was the drive I pulled in to go to high school here at St. Joe High School, which is now gone. It's now where the site of the old St. Joe Hospital is, uh, closer to downtown. Right over there where Unity Gardens is, used to be Northside Little League, where I played Little League ball. And just north of there is Holy Cross, back then, Junior College, where I spent two years before crossing the street to go to Notre Dame. Oh, and by the way, while I was at Notre Dame, I backtracked my junior year of college to work at that place called WNDU Television. <laughs> That's what you I haven't, I, I've saved a ton on gas, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's images of you and your sister walking uh, around downtown, some commercials even. Uh, there's a legacy, regardless of what you say, there's a legacy that will always be intertwined with the letters WNDU. We had a mutual mission. We had a mutual feeling going out there every day and delivering the news is that this is our town. We're going we're gonna to deliver the news in the most professional way we can, in a way that only somebody who grew up here can do. Do you still have that coat? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Does it fit? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Look, this is the least I can do, being at this desk and sharing it with you in this moment. You have inspired so many of us coming into this station and growing up in this business. You've seen so many of us grow up here. And I just want to say thank you for imparting your knowledge and everything you've done for me and, and every other person watching in that newsroom right now. You are so appreciated. Thank you, Josh. And as usual, blown away by your, your work. Uh, you, you told the story perfectly, um, and we've, we've come to expect that from you. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, geez, Terry, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. It's, it, it may, it's going to be different that I'm sure. not going to be here. But folks, when you've got people like Josh here telling stories, and Melissa, and, you know, George Ballet, and, and Lauren, and we got that great morning team of, of Tricia and Christine, this, this station is, is still a powerhouse, and that's right. not going to change when I leave. Yeah. It's, it's not going to. Now, one thing I think could improve is your dress. <laughs> and I, I recall that a while back I was wearing a tie that you really thought was cool, yes. so this is my parting oh. gift to you. <laughs> this? I, I can't see anything with this. The News at 6 is next with Josh and Lauren. <laughs>